This is the brand new Honda Navi that we just got here at our offices in Colorado. And this right here is the Honda Monkey that you've seen many times before. This is Tommy's first motorcycle, and we've done a lot of testing with this. What's interesting is these are both Honda Mini Motos, but they're about as different as Honda Mini Motos get. So in this video, we're gonna go through all the differences. Let's check them out. Also, at the end of this video, we're gonna drag race these two mini bikes to find out which one is quicker. So make sure you stick around to the end of the video so you don't miss that. Both you could kind of consider a motorcycle. The Navi has more of a motorcycle frame than the traditional scooter. You step over it instead of through it. It also doesn't have a swing arm. The motor itself is the swing arm like a traditional scooter. But over here on the Monkey, you've actually got a clutch. You've got a shift lever down by your left foot to shift through gears. And this is, even though it's miniature and scale, this, there's no doubting, is a motorcycle right here. The Navi could be a little bit questionable, but one of the biggest differences between these two bikes is that the Monkey, new school, fuel injected, the Navi, they cut some costs there, so it is carbureted. Let's do a cold start on both these bikes, see what the difference is. Something we've noticed over time is actually it's not the happiest motorcycle when it comes to a cold start. But it's not very cold right now. You can tell it it almost kind of falls on its face a little bit when you turn the throttle just like that when it's cold but it still fires right up and it's running All right, now the Navi is carbureted, so startup process is a little bit different. I not only have to flip the key, but I also have to turn the fuel on on the side of the bike. And then there's also a choke. So I'm gonna start with the choke all the way on. It is handlebar mounted, which is nice. You don't have to reach under the bike, but let's give it a go. You gotta have the brake pulled in too. Start it up, no problem. Revving up, no problem. But you do have to let it get a little warm. It's not that cold out today, so I can throw the choke off right away. And the bike's not gonna have really any issues. But on a really cold day, like I had in Moab, you definitely need to let it sit and run for a few minutes with the choke on. Is it gonna die? It's not gonna die. It's a Honda. Sounds like it's gonna die. It's not gonna die. <laughs> that was intentional. It was. It was a little intentional. That was intentional. Oh, Spike doesn't that die. Backfire, Ooh. baby. What a runner. <laughs> and a big thanks to our friends at Revzilla for making this video possible. They provided all of our riding gear and even some of the oil that is in Tommy's Monkey, some of the maintenance we've done to it. So if you need any riding gear or parts for your bike, definitely head over to Revzilla.com. I'm representing the Honda Monkey in this video on Tommy's behalf. And because that's my position, I would like to point out the difference in brakes on these two bikes. Look at that. Disc brake, of course, because that's what you would expect from a modern, safe, functional motorcycle. Uh, what is what is this, Alex? Uh, Doesn't look like a disc. No, that's a drum brake. Oh, is that your drum brake? That's a drum brake. Mm, that's, that's a little unfortunate. You can also see ABS here on the Monkey, these nice inverted forks have also got dual shocks on the rear. You've only got one. This is ridiculous. All right, that might be true. I have drum brakes, not quite the same impressive suspension that's on the Monkey, but I do have something really cool, and that is a lockable storage bin in the frame of the bike right there. It even has a waterproof seal on it so you can keep things dry on the inside and you can go pick up lunch, take it with you. I can throw my camera in there if I need to, granola bars spare parts for your monkey, like extra seat bolts maybe. One of my favorite things about all of the 125 Honda Mini Motos that we've tested from the trail to the Super Cub to the Monkey to the Grom is that they have phenomenal build quality. The fit and finish is like a full-size motorcycle. That means they use a lot of nice metal components rather than cheap plastic. And you can see that through my magnetic wallet. Look at that. Sticks to the tank. It sticks to the exhaust, it sticks to the rear fender, it sticks to the headlight, it sticks to the front fender. There's metal all over this bike. It's beautifully painted with real quality paint. This is such a nice thing to look at. It's not the same for the Navi, is it? Yeah, 
looking around at this navy, it's uh, it's pretty plasticky and it's hard to even find something that looks like it's metal, but we can test a few spots. So the front forks, those are definitely metal. Wow, you got metal suspension. Aside from the big plastic guard that sits on top of it, but you do have metal forks, metal wheels, of course, and a metal frame and a metal exhaust. Wow, your exhaust is metal? The exhaust is metal and not made out of plastic. <laughs> so look at that. But all jokes aside, the main reason for the build quality difference between these two bikes is where they're built. This Navi is built in Mexico and that Monkey is built in Thailand. And a big reason for it being built in Mexico, this Navi, it only costs $1,800, which is a heck of a lot cheaper than that Monkey over there, which is above $3,000 for an MSRP. So where it's made and the build quality definitely has a lot to play into the price and the Navi definitely has the monkey beat on price. You know what else is really nice on this Honda Monkey? Look at the upholstery on this seat. It's got piping, it's premium, and it even says Honda on it. Yeah, uh, what's going on there, bud? Don't worry about that. It's been to Moab. Hey, Alex, what is this on your, uh, on your handlebar here? That's my clutch lever. Is it? Yeah. No, just kidding. That's my parking brake, and I know I'm supposed to be sticking up for the Navi in this video, but... It does take something away from riding a motorcycle when you don't have a clutch to pull and gears to roll through, but there's a good reason for it. This is a bike that is extremely easy to ride. It's basically one-handed operation. You use your right hand, twist the throttle, and go. It's not even a semi-automatic. You don't shift through anything with your left foot. There's nothing down there. You just rest your foot, twist with your right hand, operate the brakes with your right hand, and you can carry it by a pizza with your left hand. So very practical for holding a shopping bag, taking home groceries, or for inexperienced riders who maybe are a lim little bit timid about getting on two wheels. It's one less thing to think about, or realistically, like three less things to think about. And you can just focus on going down the road, staying out of traffic, and staying on two wheels. Another great thing about Honda Mini Motos is the first part of that word, Mini. They're supposed to be small, light, manageable bikes. And even though the Navi has a smaller engine, it's a little bit more scooter-like in that it doesn't have a clutch. The funny thing is that it's bigger. It's bigger than this Honda Monkey, and it weighs almost as much. Okay, so you're totally cheating. Drop that Navi down off the center stand. Let's see them both at the same even, even height. First things first, you put it on the center stand. So if anybody did that, it's you, but still. This is a bigger bike. Why? It's a little bigger. Not quite as bad as it looked with the Navi up on the center stand. So actually, we just looked something up uh, to get specific numbers. So the trail that we had was around about 260 pounds, so I figured this would be about the same. This is 231 pounds, and the Navi is 236. So actually, the Navi weighs more than the Honda Monkey. Why is it so big? Another major difference between the Navi and the Monkey is the instrumentation. On the Navi, a lot of plastic. You have this kind of fake carbon fiber material surrounding it, and then some really old school analog gauges. Looks like this is what you would get anywhere in the world because it not only reads out in miles per hour, but also in kilometers an hour. It also has a really old school rolling odometer, but at least it does have a fuel gauge. It does have that going for it. And then the Monkey has a much more premium dash. So you turn the key and it even has a little animation with some eyes that blink at you, but you've got some more information here. Speedometer and a fuel gauge just like on the Navi, but you have a few more dummy lights and also you have some buttons on the side here because you have a trip computer, both A and B, so you can keep track of your rides and keep track of your tank of gas. And another big difference between these two bikes is the steering lock and the ignition key. They both have a traditional blade style key, but on the Monkey, you turn the bars, push the key in, turn it the rest of the way, and the bars are locked. Super simple, that's the way it's supposed to be. But on the Navi, the key only goes to the off position. You then have to pull the key out, turn the bars, and come down here to lock the steering. Not the end of the world, but sometimes I can be a lazy person, and I know I'll forget to do that, or just won't have the energy and won't feel like doing it. Motorcycles are easy to steal. Small motorcycles are even easier to steal. So you wanna have your steering locked all the time and it being in a separate location 
at least for me, I know I'd be less likely to use it. Another major difference with these motorcycles is the styling. Not only is the Monkey made out of a lot more metal, but it's also a much more retro looking bike. This is clearly styled after the vintage Honda Z50, and it's got a great look to it. It's a very handsome bike. When you buy this, you get this cute retro thing that is very appealing to look at. The Navi is something very different. It's clearly not retro because it's got all these funky kinds of shapes to it, but it's also not exactly styled after modern bikes with their squinty angular headlights and LEDs, it's sort of its own thing altogether. Also, I wanted to address one comment we've gotten constantly on the price. A lot of you guys are saying, stop calling the Navi an $1,800 bike. You pay, you know, dealer fees and you pay freight fees and setup fees and everything like that. Uh, Case, are you gonna pay those same fees with the monkey? Oh, let me think. Uh, yeah. Yeah, you will. All right, and now for the part of the video I've been waiting for all day. This is where we actually get to get out on the road and drag race both these bikes and see exactly which one is quicker, or realistically how much quicker the Monkey is than the Navi, because I'll be pretty shocked, disappointed, I don't know what the right word for it, if I can uh, beat Case on this Navi, but I don't think it's gonna happen. All right, so you wanna go on the third honk? I'll do three honks, go on the third. Sure, that sounds good. Cool. Ready? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Case did a little wheelie. You don't have to worry about that on the Navi. So, thing about having the clutch is sometimes you launch super hard and that 125cc single cylinder uh, doesn't keep going. Might have, might have tried to drop the clutch a little too aggressively. Just, just a, a little bit on the hard side. <laughs> Give it another go. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta keep in mind, it's 125 cc's. This is why mini motos are so fun. You just mess around all day. <laughs> you ready? <laughs> oh, I'm off the line harder than I thought I would be. Stay in it. Come on, Navi. Come on. Oh, no. <laughs> oh. So it, he, he launched harder. I was a little bit softer on the clutch there. It's always interesting doing these videos and uh, hopping on a bike for like the first time in months and trying to ride it all out. But yeah, uh, was less aggressive on the clutch there. So he got a better launch, but monkey easily pulled away. A hell of a lot closer than I thought it was gonna be. I got a good launch on that. Navi accelerates pretty quickly, but once you get into the higher speeds, the monkey just takes off. I was a lot less aggressive on the clutch that time, so uh, yeah, didn't didn't get a magnificent launch, but it still pulls away pretty easy. Yeah, I mean, I was pretty impressed with how close it was right at the start. But, yeah, uh, yeah, you give it give it any longer than five seconds, and the monkey is just gone. Well, and you could certainly launch this bike a lot harder if you're riding it consistently and you're used to it, but... And it's your bike. Yeah, you know? I, I ride this bike once every couple months, so... <laughs> yeah, well, that's pretty much the, uh, the exact result we were expecting. I just yeah. didn't think it would be that close right off the line. Yeah, surprising. In this video, I gave the Navi a lot of grief, and a lot of that is undeserved, because at the end of the day, I do think the Monkey is a better bike, but it is also about twice as expensive, so it should be a better bike. This Navi, for how much it costs, is a great piece of transportation. It can go as fast as you need it to on most roads around town. It's efficient, it's fun, so it's, at the end of the day, a good machine, but uh, the Monkey is the one I would have.